Hi, this is Andrew Wolf. In this video, I am continuing my discussion about anemia. In um, my previous video, if you haven't had a chance to watch it, I discussed blood loss anemia and focused on um, iron deficiency. And in this video, I'm going to talk about anemias that are caused, primarily the anemias that are caused by decreased red blood cell production. And actually, before I get started with that, I'm going to um, just sort of introduce the concept of anemia is caused by increased red blood cell destruction. So I'll talk about that first because I'm really not going to cover many of the diseases in this lecture and I will um, talk about uh, some of them in, in future lectures. So increased red blood cell destruction is, can be caused by anemias that are due to red blood cell malformations. So this can include um, sickle cell anemia and the thalassemias. And it, um, so these are sort of congenital red blood cell abnormalities. Now, the other um, sort of major classification, and I'm going to talk about sickle cell uh, disease in a later, uh, later video. Um, and then there are also some acquired, for in, and many of these are sort of autoimmune. Actually, here, let me just say acquired. And these could be autoimmune, or they could be due to inflammation. Um, TTP or thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura, um, which is a microangiopathy. Um, there are other types of microangiopathies as well, um, and these cause um, increased red blood cell destruction because um, there are actually sort of clot formations that um, cut small vessels in half and um, cause shearing of red blood cells as they try to squeeze through these um, under high flow rates. So you end up with shearing of red blood cells and this causes um, loss of red blood cells. Okay, and uh, actually TTP and microangiopathies are really fascinating. Um, I'm not going to be covering it in this, um, in, in this course. However, um, I'll probably make a video of it in the future just because I'm, I'm, I find the pathophysiology very interesting um, and maybe make it an optional video for people who are interested. Okay, so those are some of the causes of red blood cell destruction. Um, and now for the remainder of this video, I'm going to talk about anemias that are caused by decreased red blood cell production. Okay, the first cause to talk about here that would decrease red blood cell production would be aplastic anemias. Now aplastic anemias, there are many many of them. Some of them are congenital, some of them are acquired, and basically what this means is that there is bone marrow dysfunction. There's a problem with the bone marrow, so there bone, may be bone marrow dysplasia, so the marrow itself has been um, has been damaged. Um, sometimes it's damaged to, due to chemicals like chemotherapies. Um, it may be um, due to uh, radiation. Um, it may be due to disease. Um, it could be due to a temporary bone marrow suppression and there are um, many medications that can cause this. And there are also a whole host of diseases. <coughs> All right, so um, that's the first cause I wanted to introduce. And I'm not going to talk about aplastic anemias um, beyond that in this um, lecture. It is a very long list of diseases, um, each with a, uh, a different pathophysiology to it. Um, so the next types of anemias that are caused by decreased red blood cell production would be anemias caused by vitamin deficiencies.
and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I just wanted to introduce the last category of red blood, decreased red blood cell production, and that would be anemia of inflammation. I will talk about anemia of inflammation in my next video, and for the remainder of this video I'm going to focus on the vitamin deficiency anemias. Okay, so vitamin deficiency anemia is typically what we think about with vitamin deficiency anemias, is we think about deficiencies of vitamin B12 and this type of anemia also has the name pernicious anemia. And I believe the story goes that this is called pernicious anemia because it was known as a very dangerous and life-threatening anemia back before we understood the cause and the, and the relatively simple treatment for pernicious anemia. So now it is still called pernicious anemia but is no longer as pernicious as it was uh, 50 or 100 years ago. Now the other type of vitamin deficiency anemia that we will talk about is folate deficiency. All right, so we'll talk about folate deficiency first because that's the simpler of the two. Now <clears throat> folate deficiency is relatively common in this country and actually probably even more common around the world because number one it's one of the first significant deficiencies that we develop with malnourishment and number two probably even more important it is common with alcohol abuse because alcohol will actually disrupt the metabolism and storage of folate in the liver. Okay, so those are two possible causes of folate deficiency. Now we talked about uh, folate deficiency and how it can cause um, birth defects when we talked about uh, spina bifida in, in the nervous system. So it's very important in that regard as well but it is also important as a potential cause of anemia. So the reason why it causes anemia is because folic acid is a necessary ingredient in, um, in the production of nucleic acids. And specifically two base pairs, I believe it's guanine and adenine, but I'd have to look it up. But anyways, there are two of the base pairs that require the presence of folic acid um, for their creation. So if we have a deficiency in folic acid, then we are going to end up with a um, DNA base pair deficiency, and then we cannot produce effective DNA. Now because red blood cells um, are constantly reproducing. Remember they're the most numerous cell in the body. There's five there's five million per ml of blood, you know, times uh, 5,000 mLs. Lots and lots of red blood cells and they're constantly being reproduced. So anemia is sort of the first um, recognized sign of a folic acid deficiency. Now if we continue to have less and less folic acid in the body it's going to begin to uh, cause other problems in uh, more slowly uh, dividing cells. Okay so let's go on to talk about vitamin B12 and pernicious anemia. Um, so pernicious anemia is interesting because it has a long story that starts in the stomach. Now in order for B12 to be absorbed in the small bowel, it gets absorbed I believe down on the jejunum, but in order to be absorbed the B12 coming into the body needs carrier. 
and the carrier that it needs in order to cross the uh, mucosa of the gut is called intrinsic factor. Now intrinsic factor is created in the parietal cells of the stomach. And the parietal cells do other things as well. We'll talk about their role. They, they have a significant role in acid production as well as some enzymes. Um, and we'll talk about that when we get into our discussion of the GI tract. But in this discussion, one of the important things that it creates is intrinsic factor. Or abbreviated IF. So IF needs to bind with this B12 in order for B12 to be absorbed through the bloodstream. Okay. Um, so what happens with pernicious anemia is something um, inhibits or decreases intrinsic factor production, um, either synthesis or excretion. And there's several things that can do that. Um, the most common, there, there are um, congenital diseases, so people can actually be born with IF deficiencies. Um, and this is fairly rare. It's much more common to be acquired. And the most common acquired uh, intrinsic factor deficiency is due to an autoimmune disease that either attacks the intrinsic factor um, producing quality, uh, producing elements of the parietal cells or attacks the parietal cells themselves. So sometimes the parietal cells just lose their intrinsic factor producing ability or sometimes the parietal cells are actually destroyed and we also lose their other function as well. Um, but actually <laughs> intrinsic factor is probably one of its, the, the most important life-sustaining aspects of these parietal cells. Even though they have other important um, functions, the body can cope without them. Without them. Um, another cause of acquired uh, intrinsic factor deficiency um, is chronic gastritis. And that's just because the chronic inflammation and um, chemicals that damage the parietal cells um, maybe because of hyperacid secretion or en chronic NSAID use um, or chronic um, peptic ulcer disease, um, H. pylori infection um, can over time damage and destroy enough parietal cells that we have a significant um, intrinsic factor deficit. And then another cause obvious, which is sort of obvious in hindsight, is a gastrectomy. If you remove the entire stomach, then you obviously lose all of the intrinsic factor producing cells in the body. <clears throat> okay, so that is the way that we have um, decreased intrinsic factor that causes decreased B12. Now, in this day and age, it's very easy to treat um, pernicious anemia because all we have to do is give a person um, subcutaneous B12, and then we don't have to worry about lack of absorption in the gut. So it's very, very treatable now once it's recognized. Now, what does B12 do? Well, B12, similar to folate, is an important coenzyme in the production of DNA. So similar to folate deficiency, what we end up with is the body just has the inability to produce red blood cells. So we have decreased red blood cell production. Now B12 also um, is very important in the neurologic system. because it is an important coenzyme in the production of myelin. So um, patients that have 
pernicious anemia also have some significant neurological deficits. Um, they can have ataxia and coordination issues. Um, and because it all it seems to heavily affect the um, myelin in the um, in the frontal cortex, um, there's often a lot of affective changes like depression and it also can cause um, dementias. Now if this is caught early enough all of this all of these neurological changes uh, can be reversed however if it goes on for too long the damage to the myelin is permanent and the patient will have these changes forever. So ideally um, we will pick up on pernicious anemia quickly and recognize it quickly and, um, and treat it because again it's very treatable but it needs to be caught early to prevent these permanent neurological changes. Okay so that's all there is to the second video on anemia. Um, I'm going to put a, uh, a link up so that you have quick and easy access to my uh, hematology uh, physiology and pathophysiology channel and you can connect to my uh, third an anemia video in which I will talk about the anemia of chronic disease. Um, please uh, take a moment to um, give me feedback on the video by giving me a like or please feel free to ask me questions in the comments. Thank you very much.